Hello my kindred souls, welcome back to the Empowered Empath. Being creative is one of the most potent and powerful direct conduits to source that we can access. We can access it at any time through all sorts of different means. And when we are being creative, it takes us into flow state. You've probably heard about flow state and all of the benefits that flow state provides. When we're in flow, we're also usually having a really good time. We're usually having a lot of fun. And between flow state and fun, the energy that we are creating is incredibly powerful. We can harness this energy and use it to amplify our manifestation, our ritual work, any releasing and healing that we may be trying to do. Today my goal is to help you reconnect with your creative spirit so you can use your inspiration to amplify your spiritual practice and to amplify your spiritual awakening. I'm going to give you five easy ways that you can explore your inner artist, get back in touch with that inspiration. And if you stick around until the end, I also have a free gift, which I'm excited to share with you to help you get back in touch with your creative side. First off, I just want to say a really warm thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel. We now have a community of over 100 plus subscribers here on the Empowered Empath and I really couldn't be more grateful. Your comments and your feedback genuinely, truly, really do inspire me to continue making content and to continue sharing. So I just want to say welcome. Thank you so much for subscribing, and if you're watching, you haven't yet subscribed, I would humbly invite you, if it so resonates with you, to subscribe now. But otherwise, let's just jump right into the video. So first off, to reconnect with your creative spirit, you have to remind yourself that it's there. Everyone is an artist, and that means you have to stop telling yourself or others, I'm not an artist. Everyone has an art form. Some people cook, some people crochet, some people are performance artists, some people are visual artists, some people paint, draw, some people are musicians, some people are actors, actresses. There are all sorts of different art forms and it's simply a matter of finding the one that you have the most fun with, <laughs> finding the one that resonates the most with you. Art is meant to be playful. When we were children, we didn't have any preconceived ideas about art. And if you look at the kids in your life now, you'll see this. They just see art as a form of play. They love to paint and draw and sculpt with their little Play-Doh. And I mean, they don't care if it's good. They're just having fun. And typically they're pretty thrilled with their creations. But somewhere along the way, so many of us have that inner artist subtly discouraged out of them. Eventually we start creating less and less until we stop creating altogether and stop thinking of ourselves as artists. So today, I want to take a second, just before I get into the how, I want to take a quick second and just invite your inner artist to come forward. And with that inner artist, I invite your inner child to come forward, because your inner child is absolutely connected to this inner artist. And somewhere along the way, that inner child got the impression that your creative expression doesn't have enough value for you to spend the time creatively expressing yourself. So today I invite that inner child to come forward. I invite that inner artist to come forward. Okay, so the reason I get so excited about this is because of the magic I know this can bring into your life, not just your spiritual practice. Art, creativity, they're linked on a very, very deep level to our most authentic spiritual expression. So how do you tap into this energy in meaningful and practical ways? I've got five for you. So let's just get started. Number one, free form. You do not have to have a structure or process in place to be creative. You can literally do it at any time. I recommend getting yourself a small journal or a small sketchbook that you can carry around with you. And when you're feeling inspired, pull it out and jot down whatever it is that your inspiration is, or if you want to draw a picture or a doodle or whatever it is, whatever that inspiration is, just keep that book with you so that you can capture it. Creativity is like a muscle, and the more you flex it, the stronger it's going to become. So keeping a little book with you that you can use on the fly, it's just great practice and also will help you remember what those inspirations are. So if you are having a creative block, you can go to this little book, you can look through it, and very often that can get the creative juices flowing. 
So this first one, like I say, not a lot of structure. Do what you are inspired and moved to do. Just keep yourself a little book or what have you so that you have a record of that. And you'll also be able to see the progress that you've made and the inspirations that you've had. And, and like I say, that's a really neat thing to be able to go back and look at. You may find things in there that actually surprise you that you may have forgotten about. And then looking back, you go, oh yeah, like I wanted to do that. Anyway, okay. Number two, is using art for healing purposes specifically. So how do you go about using this for healing? Art therapy is a modality that you may have heard talked about. Essentially, art therapy is used to help people access, process, express their emotions, and it has been found to be incredibly effective. Art therapy has been growing in popularity, and various studies have been done around the modality. One particular study focused on the effects of visual art specifically on a group of patients who were dealing with chronic illnesses such as cancer. Some of the benefits reported were, one, that it helped distract patients from the thoughts of their illness, obviously, and it improved their overall well-being by decreasing their negative feelings and increasing the amount of positive feelings that they reported having. Depression in the patients was also trending towards a reduction, and medical outcomes were actually improving. There were also reductions in stress, anxiety, and overall distress. Further to all of that, there were improvements in the patient's spontaneity, expressions of grief, social interactions, and positive sense of identity. That's some powerful stuff. So, I just wanted to preface art therapy with a little bit of information about how beneficial this can actually be. I mean, we, this was looking at people with chronic illness. If it can do that for people with chronic illness, imagine what it can do for someone who's just maybe moderately unhappy. Pretty fascinating, right? Like this is a largely untapped resource that we can access at any time. It's one that helps us reduce our stress and anxiety, helps us express what we may be struggling with, and improves our overall sense of self and our identity. So how do you do it? First thing you need to do is choose your modality. And this can be literally anything, painting, drawing, sculpting, it can even be something like coloring, literally anything, whatever's resonating with you. Choose your medium and then you want to put that to the page or the canvas or put your hands to the clay, whatever your medium is. You just want to dive in, just get started. You don't need to have a plan beforehand. The, the point is not to create a finished product. The point is to enjoy the experience and express yourself through the experience. So as you're doing this, you want to choose colors that resonate with how you're feeling. Choose the colors that you're drawn to. Paint or draw or mold the shapes that really express what it is that you're feeling. And you may not necessarily know what shape it is. Just get in there, get your hands dirty, start playing with it. Again, I'm going back to art should be playful and it should be about the experience of creation versus worrying about any kind of finished product. You want to allow the process to actually be the product here for you. So have fun with it, dig into it, let whatever's coming to the surface emotionally or mentally come to the surface and just work with that. How do I want to express this? What does this feel like? If this emotion were a color, if this emotion were a texture, what would that look like? How do I want to express that? And just, just do it. No thought here, just moving with that intuition. That is a great way to step into art therapy. There are also art therapy groups that you can join, workshops that you can participate in, but this isn't one that you need to have a group to participate in. You can do this at home yourself. Free writing is another great way to do this. I'll talk a little bit more about free writing a little later in the video, um, but essentially just write whatever comes out. Um, again, whatever medium resonates with you. Art therapy is about the expression not the finished product. Number three is using art in your manifestations or in your ritual work. And in my opinion, this is where it really gets fun. Using your creative energy in tandem with any energy work that you may already be doing is going to give you a massive boost to that ritual work. And I'm talking about things like release, manifestation, and spell work specifically. 
Vision boards are one example of this where you're essentially creating a collage of all the things that you wish to manifest. That is an example of using your creative energy in a manifestation ritual essentially and that's one that pretty much everybody has heard of but there's lots of different ways to do this so i'm going to give you a few one you can draw what it is you wish to manifest and i want to be clear you do not have to be a fabulous artist to do this you can draw stick people the point is that you know what it is that you're drawing and what you want to do here is think about the feelings that this outcome is going to produce think about how it's going to feel when you have this outcome that you are essentially drawing out. And you wanna pour those feelings and that energy into this drawing and really amplify that outcome and amplify that energy through this creative process. Once you've completed your drawing, you can do a few different things with it as resonates with you. And this comes back to your ritual work. So you can tuck it in your wallet or your purse or what have you and keep it with you so that you have it near you at all times. You may want to tuck it away in a journal so it's something that you can revisit later. You may want to plant it in your garden. Uh, you also may want to burn it and you can see the smoke going into the ether essentially sending that message out into the universe whatever resonates with you ritual work is largely about the symbolism and the actions that we're taking so drawing it out pouring the energy into this drawing and then sending it out into the universe in a way that is meaningful to you is an incredibly powerful little manifestation ritual that you can incorporate into your spiritual practice Another way that you can do this, if you're musically inclined, you could write a song. Perhaps you are a writer, you could write a story, or you could write a poem expressing what it is you wish to manifest. Whatever it is that resonates with you in terms of the medium, move with that. Also, things like altar building are a creative process. When you're building an altar, you're choosing where you wanna place your objects, where they're most visually appealing, where they're most energetically meaningful to you. There's a great amount of creativity that's going into building your altar. Simply acknowledging that and focusing that energy into your altar, you can preserve that, you can tap back into it, you can infuse your altar with that beautiful creative energy. Things like creating a medicine wheel, keeping a dream journal. These are all ways that you're bringing your creativity into your spiritual practice. I also wanna say here that you can take this one step further and actually start designing your own ritual processes. This is things like throwing a stone into the river to symbolize throwing off that which is no longer serving you, releasing the dead weight that you no longer wish to carry. You can design those kinds of symbolic processes and there's a great deal of creativity in that as well. So a lot of this is also acknowledging where your creativity is because this whole I'm not an artist mindset is very pervasive and when we start recognizing I am an artist, I am the artist of my life, I am the artist of my spiritual practice, I am the artist of my relationships, life takes on a whole different texture and I'm telling you it is fun. So no wrong answers here. Just allow yourself to get inspired. Try not to place any limitations on yourself. Sometimes we, we get an idea and we go, oh, I can't do that. Try not to place those limitations on yourself. Try not to stop yourself. Just step into that beautiful creative expression and let it be what it is. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I had to stop because this painting was crooked and it was driving me bananas. So if that was driving you bonkers, sorry about that. <laughs> it's fixed. Moving on. The fourth way that we can get in touch with our inner artist and explore our inner artist is by incorporating our creative aspect into our spiritual reflections or meditations. Art can be very trance inducing. Not all art, of course, some art does require really focused kind of meticulous attention, but there are plenty of art forms that don't require that kind of attention and can help you get into a trance state or a meditative state very easily. So a few modalities that you can use to get you into this flow or trance state. One, macrame knitting or crochet. I put that all under one category because they're all tend to be fairly similar. I know, don't get mad at me, I know they're different, but they all involve counting and nodding. And so in a sense, it's very repetitive. It can get you into that trance state very easily. Abstract painting or drawing also. Abstract though, you don't wanna have a specific concept. The idea here isn't focusing on doing something 
very meticulous or specific, the focus is on allowing your mind to wander while you're being creative. So you want a project that's going to allow you to do that. Collage is actually not so bad for this as well, although you, this one, it can be, you know, you're making decisions about what images to use, what images not to use, what colors you're choosing, that sort of thing. So experiment with it. See what flows best for you. I really love abstract painting, abstract drawing. Free writing is an awesome way to do this as well. And with free writing, you just write whatever comes into your mind. There's no judgment. There's no punctuation. There's no worrying about whether or not the ideas flow or whether or not the ideas are even connected. You just write what comes out. This can get you into trance state like that. And sometimes when you're reading over what you wrote, you'll find that you don't even remember some of the stuff that you wrote. And it can be really enlightening. So that's one that I definitely encourage you to give a try. Just one final quick note that I want to make around this aspect, and that is, in my own life, in my own experience, Spirit has often used my creative endeavors as a conduit for communication with me. And so when I'm working on a creative project, I may receive messages directly from Spirit, very clear, direct messages. Sometimes I'll receive broader concepts. Sometimes I'll receive spiritual guidance. But opening yourself up to the creative flow of energy can also open you up to communication with spirit. So this is definitely something I encourage you to try. The fifth way that you can tap into your inner artist has to do with amplifying your intention setting. And this is something that you can use every day. It doesn't have to be part of some ritual. It is tied to manifestation, but this is a way that you can use your creativity in everyday activities to amplify that which you wish to manifest and create more of in your life. So how do you do this? The first thing you want to do is think about what you want to manifest. What do you want to create more of in your life? You have to make that decision first so you're working with a clear and concise intention. Once you have your intention, now you want to be creative about everything that you're doing. So here's an example. Let's say I want to bring more love into my life. That's my what I really desire. I want to manifest more loving interactions and more love in my life. I can do this a few different ways. Maybe I really like to garden. This is a great one. Gardening, I love gardening because you actually get to see your plants grow and that there's a beautiful symbolism in that. So as you're tending your garden, as you're caring and nurturing for your plants, Think about your intention. You want to bring more love into your life. Think about what it feels like when you have that love in your life. Think about the warmth. Think about the joy. Think about the feelings of intimacy and connection that that's going to bring into your life. And think about how that makes you feel. Really try to feel that in the body. Feel what that outcome feels like for you. And then you want to direct that energy into your plants, into the nurturing that you are doing for your plants. You want to recognize and acknowledge the symbolism that as these plants grow, so should the love in your life grow. So should the expressions of love that you receive from others. And as you give this love, you don't give the love that it's going to be given back, like it's not a tit for tat, but as you give this love, it becomes a symbolic gesture of giving back, of reciprocation. And so we get into this beautiful feedback of love. So you can do this with, with your gardening. Let's say gardening's not your thing. Maybe you're into cooking. Maybe you really like to cook. As you're preparing your evening meal, again, you focus on that outcome. What does that outcome feel like for you? You want to put that energy into your meal. Now when you consume that meal and anyone else who's consuming that meal is consuming this intention of bringing more love into their life, that's a beautiful thing to share with people. Also, you're consuming that meal, you're consuming the energy that you've put into that meal to help draw love towards you, and now that becomes a part of you, and you radiate that outwards. So this is what I mean when I say get creative about being creative. <laughs> you can make this work for you in any aspect of your life, and you can take your mundane activities and you can turn them into artistic, creative activities that are helping you manifest that which you wish to manifest. It's all about being present and being intentional about what you're doing. So using your creative energy to amplify and enhance your manifestations is really all about recognizing and acknowledging the symbolism in the art that moves you and how that relates to that which you wish to create more of in your life. 
I keep looking back here to make sure that this picture hasn't anyway sorry if you're still with me first of all thank you for watching second of all it's time for the free gift that I was talking about so to help you get into your creative groove I'm providing for you a free coloring page download something I haven't talked much about on my channel is my own art I paint I draw I do all kinds of artistic projects one of my favorite is making coloring pages for adults so this coloring page I have for you is called the green lady this is what she looks like the link to the coloring page is in the description down below for you and if you do print her out and color her I would love 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 to see what you create if you wish to connect more intimately with spirit and with source art can be a powerful pathway home being creative helps you exercise the part of your brain that connects with and understands that which is unseen. Now, as I've reflected on this in my own practice, it can only make sense. Art is an act of self-reflection. Through art, we come to know ourselves more intimately and more deeply. And as we connect with that aspect of self that's connected to source, we connect with source that spark, the singularity that connects us all. The benefits of rediscovering your own inner artist are deeply personal and can be tremendously healing. So I encourage everyone this week to find some time to get creative. Don't worry about your end result. Don't put expectations on yourself. Just get your hands dirty and be playful with it. Have fun with it. I suspect you might be surprised and potentially delighted by what you create probably more so by what you experience. Okay, that's all I have for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If so, give me a thumbs up, share with your friends, all that good stuff. If my content resonates with you, please remember to subscribe before you go. Also, remember to grab that coloring page in the description below before you go. If you'd like to learn more about my practice, you can visit me at tarotbyseraphim.ca or tarotbyseraphim on Facebook. And also remember to join the Empowered Empath Facebook group. And of course, all of those links will be in the description below for you. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you next week. Blessings.